In the end, disappointing result for Manchester United as they could only take a point away uh, from uh, Selhurst Park. Jules is with us uh, throughout today's show. Uh, when you saw United in the first half, right, you thought, right, there's a lot of potential there. They're going to kick on probably and get the three points from this game. Why didn't that materialise? Finishing. Some good goalkeeping. Palace got better in the second half. My God, they were absolutely useless in the first half. They did have one chance near the end, but they, they just couldn't keep the ball. And United controlled it, but we've seen it this year with Tottenham. You can batter teams all you want, but you have to have the final product, the end product, and, and that was sort of missing from them. They're giving up a few chances. It was interesting. Everybody's doing this midfield thing now. It was Dallow today, yeah. from left back going into the middle of the park. We've seen all these teams sort of do it, and they've all sort of went, oh, it's working for them, it's working for them, so we'll do it. So there was a little change in pattern of play and, and how they did it, and for most of this game, they, they controlled it, but they were not clinical in the final third, and Henderson made, made some good saves. That being said as well, uh, Eze, those chances Eze had yes. were, were good chances. So, But uh, uh, over the... Over the whole path of the game, United should have won this. Yeah, but again, Steve, it's that lack, lack of cutting edge in the final third yep. that's, that's held them back, not only in this game, but in a couple of matches already this season. Yeah, I mean, and that's, you know, you can't point the finger at the manager. That's, that's down to the players on the field. Mm. And at half-time, Ten Hag has to, has to know and be thinking, there's no way we're going to dominate the way we did in the first Alice half. Alice won't be as bad it, in the first No, it doesn't. If you're at home, maybe that happens. But away from home, it's, it, it almost never happens that, that you can dominate the home side for both halves. And so the fact that they never took the chances, it was, it was going to be difficult. And then the, obviously the way the Crystal Palace started the second, they got, got in their face, then it's a completely different ball game. But the key is it was away from home. And the key is, is they never took the chances when they came and they find themselves dropping two points. Yeah, dropping points, Jules. They're sitting in 11th. In the table at the moment, they've only manifested two wins from their opening five matches. They've been pretty bang average, haven't they? Yeah, bang average, I think, is the perfect word. Seven points, five goals scored in five games, five goals conceded. I mean, this is for me, this is where this team is about, mm. considering the manager that they have. And we, we don't have to go back again on should Ten Hag be on that bench or not. I don't think he should. But this, this, this is what you get also. And yes, sometimes the performances are a decent at Brighton, maybe they deserve a draw and in the end that leg goal cost them. Okay, there's, there's other games where they were just destroyed completely, their second defeat. And today, great first half and they, they deserve to be ahead at, at half time, but that second half, they became bang average again. And I think there's no consistency over what they produce. If you look even at the five goals they scored, three in open play and two on set pieces. So even in open play, it's actually not that good. It's not that fluid. It's the, finishers, the finishing is lacking. We talked about Xerxes when he signed and, and since as well, but the fact that he was not an in and out striker, he's not that clinical. Okay, fair enough. But you've got other players that could score. It's not just on him who played tonight up front. And then I think considering Marcus Rashford has scored three goals in his last two games, one, albeit one against Barnsley in the, in the League Cup, but still, why do you drop him? Drop Ahmad, for example, who has been OK, but not certainly in the form currently that Marcus Rashford is in. Why dropping him? Why rotating him and not the others? I, I really struggle to understand when someone is in form, even, again, against a, a lower league team three days ago, why would you drop him and not somebody who's clearly not in as good a form as, as the one that you've just dropped? Uh, well, let's talk about Rashford, because obviously it's been a big talking point over the last couple of days. He's recaptured a little bit of form. Ten Hag was asked about that in the press conference. Uh, yes, they say, I think he always knew and every player knows how important lifestyle is. When your lifestyle is not right, you can't perform. You don't get the right levels when you don't have a good and disciplined life away from character. So suggesting maybe that he's not going out as much. And this is what he had to say about dropping him today. It's not a difficult decision to rest Rashford. We have to rotate. We have so many games to cover and we have to give Alejandro Garnacho games. He has only started one time this season. Here's more from Ten Hag after the game. Yeah, I heard already there's speculation and some some pundits and that is that's crazy then you yeah, I would all, almost say you are as person you are not okay when you bring such speculation if you don't know well, uh, what's on this is just rotation and um, we have uh, many games to cover and not uh, we have more than 11 start 11 players 
but we have to give all the players, uh, if they perform, we will give them their chances. And finally, we will find out, of course, the players who perform better and will play more. But this has nothing to do. And I'm very happy with Marcus, with everything with his. He's not, listen, I, I, we all understand rotation, right? It, it, it's become part of the game, yeah. the modern game. Yeah, they got 20 Europa League midweek. However, you, 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 when you're searching for results, he's, he's talking in his press conferences, Eric Tenag, as if he's bulletproof. It's as if he's some manager who has got so much in the bank that he can have bad results mm. and he'll, he'll just power through it. He can't. He's two or three bad results away from being well into the bottom half of the Premier League. He is not bulletproof. And yet he's rotating somebody who's actually in form, yeah. as he said just there, his own words, to give other people a chance. He's not in the position to give people a chance. He needs to get results for all the reasons we've talked about around the start of the season. So this is another strange press conference for him because the only thing that's going to dig him out of people not speculating about his job is Man United not being mid-table. And that is where they are with another, to, to, to paraphrase, to, to coin the phrase of the boys, bang average. And yet he's talking about giving people chances. It's about getting results for him. Yeah. Otherwise, he will be packing his bags. And that's, that's strange words. He makes no sense whatsoever. You, what he said on Friday, you know, as a coach, you, you try and get the best out of your players and you do everything you can, everything you can in order to put them in a position and get them in a state of mind or a physical state to do well, right? Mm -hmm. And the last, the last thing you do is you come out in the media and criticise a player because you've had, you've had to exercise every other way possible to get him going. And the, only, the last resort is to criticise somebody in the media. And you've got the cheek to turn around and sit the next day and wonder why people are speculating when Rashford doesn't start after you've just slagged them off the day before. He's, he, this guy, it makes no sense. Every time he opens his mouth, you, you have to think about what he's... You don't know what he's doing. Mm. What, what is he doing? Is he trying to knock Rashford down a peg? Or, or, is, or is he track, does he think he's looking after him? And then the final one of all is, this guy Rashford has been trying to get his form for how long? Yeah. And eventually finds some. And what's the best thing to do when somebody gets some form? Give Garnett Sit him on the yeah. backside and play somebody else. It, it makes no sense. None at all. Jules, does it make any sense to you? No, not at all. I agree with the boys and I've just said, why dropping him now as well? And don't give me the, we've got a game against 20 on Thursday in the Conference League. This is, I don't know, it's mad. And I agree with Stevie as well. Um, but we've said it before so many times, this season, last season, his communication, Ten Hag's communication is dire, has always been dire. He doesn't know what he's saying. It's, it doesn't make much sense. If, I, just, I just don't understand. But at least it's the, the gift that keeps on giving. So, uh -huh. uh, you know, just for that, I want him to stay in his job. There you go. <laughs> the, Europe, the European stuff for him, is it the conference they're in or something? I can't uh, remember. Europa League. The Europa League. Europa. Yes. That's how sort of disinterested we all are. Of course. It? Is he can brush that away, some bad results or going out or whatever, by saying, listen, this is a distraction for yeah. us. Yeah. The Premier League yeah. is where he's going to be hired and fired or where he's going to keep, lose his job or keep his job. That's his bread and butter. That's where everybody looks for your 38-game season. At the end, you know, where are we? Where are the results? And this... Rotation, chances, talking about your players in this, this manner is just it almost seems arrogant to me. Arrogant that somehow he managed to survive the end of last season because of the win in the cup final when his employers were out looking for other uh, managers to go and hire that were better than him and then gave some uh, nonsense story about he's the man for the job. And, and, and he does to me, he talks to the media and by that the people, and it sounds as if he's got in his mind, all the time in the world to just make changes and do this and, and, and Ineos and all these people that are in there and Dan Ashworth and Jason Wilcox and all the, the big wigs that are going to make decisions are just going to sit back and they're just going to sit in their hands and wait whilst he dithers around, drops players, gives people chances, gets sort of average results. It, it, to me, smells like he thinks 
in his mind, he's untouchable. And these results, as I say, if, if Man United sitting mid-table is OK for them, because that's where they are just now, mm -hmm. then that's fine. Right? But what are we off the back of? Getting completely outplayed by Liverpool. Beating Southampton, newly promoted team, uh, three points there, clearly. And then playing well in, for periods in this game against a, a Crystal Palace squad that was, you know, they were trying to sell everybody in the summer. Uh, and they only kept, kept the best player because they, they, they managed to stave off Newcastle. Uh, but their squad is thin. And they are, they've had a strug real struggle at the start of the season. And yet United have dropped more points. That's not the standards that this club have set and should be setting. But to this manager, he seems to think it's OK.